see my feet. All right. So today we're going to be going over a little bit more uh, mobility with our ankles. We are going to do some wrist circles. We're going to tie in the elbow and the shoulder. We did a lot of um, hip stuff yesterday. Uh, hopefully you guys aren't sore at all, but it's possible, right? Sometimes that happens and some of those muscles aren't quite used to moving that way. So we're going to start off with the feet. All right. We're going to be doing, um, if you need assistance, I'm going to go ahead and grab a stick. For balance, some of you guys may need a stick to help support you. So I got a couple sticks back here I'm going to hang on to. If you don't have a stick, it's okay. Just use a chair, okay? So if you don't have a, I'm just going to use this railing here. So if you can get use a wall, right, when we're doing some of these things that require balance, right, you can't hang on. Right now we're not really testing your balance. Um, however, having said that, we are going to be testing your balance, okay? And one second, grab my stick. All right, so for the assessment, right, I always like to use an assessment, some form of assessment. So whether it's, like I said, it could just be balance, right? Uh, it could be touching your toes, right? So sometimes we're tight in our hamstrings, we're tight in our calves, or our low back does not permit for us to bend down and touch our toes. And so we're going to be using these mobility and movement drills to see if that clears up some of that inhibition right or some of that restriction so sometimes you're thinking oh man my hamstrings are really tight i gotta stretch just my hamstrings but i have news for you people if you've been stretching your hamstrings and they're not getting any better why would you keep stretching your hamstrings right you cannot touch your toes and you're stretching your hamstrings for minutes and minutes day in and day out and you still can't touch your toes you may be lacking actual stability in your low back right you may not be stable enough to get low enough so we're actually going to do some activation of your core to try to improve that okay so we'll work up once we get to the hip part but for now let me see if i can turn this on one second guys bear with me all right ah oh, instagram you're here there's not there was too many people i'm glad to have you back there's too many people online um Everybody's trying to stream, right? I'm pretty sure we're going to be crashing a lot of live streaming services. So those of you that don't know, I'm actually going live on Instagram, going live on Facebook, and I'm also looping this in with Loom. So I am recording these, and I'm going to upload them. So if this is a replay, you, all you basically missed was that Instagram Live told me, can't go live. There's too many people going on live right now. So with that said, and yesterday I think I did meet with the quota because I got online three, four times, I think my fourth time in the evening, I couldn't get on at all. So, go figure. Um, where was I? Oh, balance. So, if you wanna try your balance, just go ahead and stand, okay? You Just for safety, you don't have to lift your foot up quite so high, right? All right, so here's the first drill. You can assess that one, and then come back to the other one and assess this one, all right? So we're gonna be working on getting those feet to open up. I'm gonna to try to scoot back so you guys can see my feet. I wore blue socks today, okay? So the feedback was, I can't see what your feet are doing. If I wear black socks and I'm on this black mat, it's difficult to see, okay? So I wear blue just for you. But blue on blue, hopefully you can see that. So, starting off, we're going to, let me pull this up so you guys can see. All right, nice and tall. You can use this if you need it. If you don't need it, just hang on to it, okay? But what I want you to try to do is go forward. Okay? If you don't have a stick, I won't really apply to you anyway, okay? Today's really not about using a ton of um, equipment that you may not have at home, but if you need a chair, by all means get a chair, or if you want to use the wall, you can use the wall. So we're going to do that 10 times going straight, okay? So I'm going to actually turn away from you so that you guys can see how and where I'm positioning my foot. Becky, is that you? Yes. How are you, Becky? Follow along as much as you can. All right, so watch my right foot, okay? So I'm going forward, not down. This is a lunge, I don't want to be going down. I want to go toward the garage door, okay? Back and forth. I sit in back and forth, okay? If that hurts your toe or if it's uncomfortable, roll up a towel, okay? I'm gonna show you a modification with a towel or something soft. This is a balance pad, nice and squishy foam, okay? So if it does bother you, you can position that. And I'm going to show you how, hopefully, you can see my foot's going to be dangling, okay? So you can use a towel, and let's leave your toes to hang off of this, okay? So, again, my toes are below, oh, wait, 
Then he prayed. Okay? So that's going to open up my foot, my ankle, and my toes aren't going to be jammed into the ground. Okay? So that's an idea or an option if that's cramming into your uh, foot. All right. If you don't have any feet issues and you're rolling right along, we're going to go to the outside now. Okay? So first we went straight. Now we're going to the side. Okay? Now my foot is actually, my ankle is rotated out, okay? You want that to go out while you maintain your chest up, okay? Really work on lengthening. You should be feeling a stretch through the outside of your foot, okay? So this outside part of your front of your foot. And then last but not least, to the inside, okay? So think about if you were going to kick a ball, right, how you position your foot. Just be careful with that big toe. Okay, let me zoom in. And show you guys your big toe you're going to want to curl that so if this is the ground you don't want your toe to be jamming into the floor that's going to hurt okay you want to tuck your big toe under and your foot is going to be angled and you're going to be applying a stretch through this part of your foot okay so that stretch is going to be happening here okay so tuck that toe that toe underneath okay i have feet issues we all have feet issues i'm sorry to hear that but you're in the right place becky don't worry Oops, sorry, I guess they're trying to call you out, right? Well, nobody knows who you are, right? That's a nice thing about social media, you can hide. I don't know who that person is, I can't see who they are. Okay, so you see my foot, it's at an angle, if you can't see. And if you can't see, okay? If you can't see my foot, try to keep this leg straight as you bend this one, okay? You might notice that this front leg isn't going to want to bend as much. We'll get to that in a few minutes, okay? So, going back to your assessment. See if your balance improves. See if you have better awareness, a better movement with those toes, right? And your foot is supposed to move a little bit when you're balancing, right? Makes it easier. So, if that got easier, great. Now we're gonna go to the other side, okay? Let me show you from this angle. Let me do one thing, give me one moment. Sometimes it's hard to see my feet what they're doing. Okay, hopefully now you guys can see my feet a little bit better, make a little bit brighter. All right, facing this way, okay? So, you want your foot to be straight on for this one. Nice and flat. Keep your chest up, drive that knee forward, okay? Nice and easy. I want you to start to apply some pressure into the ground with this back foot, okay? Nothing crazy, just about 10%. So as we go forward, I want you to start to apply some pressure. Hold, 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 keep this leg straight, and then release, okay? So forward, take that body weight forward, apply that foot into the ground, 20% pressure. Hold it, hold it, and relax, okay? Last one. Forward, apply some of that pressure, okay? For this last one, I'm going to turn around. So excuse me, i got to show you my back. But it's so that you guys can see the angle of my foot, okay? My foot angle is straight for this first one, okay? So I'll show you that in a second. Christine, what's going on? All right. So mobilizing the front of that foot, keeping this back leg straight, keep your chest up, forward, okay? Back and forth. Now I'm going to apply some of that pressure into the ground. Hold, hold, hold. Only about 20% here, you know, nothing crazy. And then release. And what you should notice is that every time you're getting a little bit more control, a little bit more mobility, a little bit more range in that foot. Okay? So now we're gonna go to the side. So to recap, first one, my foot was straight. Now my my heel's gonna go to the outside, almost like I'm rolling or twisting my ankle, okay? Alright, let's show you the back. So my foot was straight before. Now I'm gonna let my heel fall out to the side, okay? Same thing, maintain your height, nice and easy, back and forth. Okay, and then the last one's gonna be in, right? Like I'm kicking a ball across my body, okay? Tuck that toe under, don't jam that toe, that's not gonna feel good. Balance. Okay, you should feel that in the front part here of your foot, through the inside, okay? 
So just go slow. The rules are simple, right? If it hurts, don't go so far. If it hurts, either go slower, shorten your range, or for returning hurting, discomfort's okay, I'm all right with that. But if it's a sharp pain like a bee sting, just don't do it. Hang on a second, we're gonna move up to the knee in a moment, okay? Before we get to that knee, we're gonna go ahead and drop down onto our one knee, okay? So one knee's gonna go down. For this, if you want to use a stick, a chair, get near a wall for just for your balance, that's totally fine. But we are going to apply a little bit of pressure with our um, upper body onto our knee, because that's going to help us actually get further across, okay? Normally, I would say just grab a kettlebell or a dumbbell, but because we're doing virtually nothing, no uh, equipment today for this mobility and movement, we're just using body weight, well, but we can apply some pressure down, okay? So first, just kind of get an assessment of how that feels in the front of that ankle, okay? If you've got pretty good range, that's good. If you don't, this is going to be great for you. So we're going to go three directions. Straight to the inside and to the outside, okay? But first, just go ahead and put some weight on your thigh. And hang out here. We're going to hang out for 10 seconds, okay? I don't like to hold things too long, especially with mobility and movement, obviously. There's not a lot of movement, obviously, but... What I want you to do when you're done with that, come out of that, I want you to release your pressure and try to stay there for five seconds. So after you've taken that pressure off, now I want you to slowly start pushing back. Okay, so the first 10 seconds, we're going to push down with a little bit of upper body weight, hold that end range, and then release that. I want to make sure you're able to control load and deload at both ranges, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense for us to improve mobility and increase range of motion if we're gonna be weak and unstable. Does that make sense? You guys following that? So the whole point of this is for you to be strong, normal, like in a normal shortened range, but also strong and strengthen and stress those tissues in an elongated position, right? So you're gonna be stretching that Achilles, the lower calf, but you're also gonna be mobilizing that ankle joint in the front, okay? Try that one more time. So, weight bearing down, push down, go forward, and hold there. Okay, you're pushing down the whole time. I got pretty good amount of pressure down. I'd say like 30%, 40, 50, push down, hold, 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 release, slowly take your hands off. Now, can you sustain that? Can you lose that? Or are you noticing that? Once you let go, you start to lose some of that range, which is okay. That's all right, that's normal. Okay, now I'm gonna face you guys straight on. So before I was going at 12 o'clock. Okay, so this is 12. Now we're gonna go with our uh, knee toward 11 o'clock, okay? And then obviously to one o'clock. So first was 12, and now we're going toward 11, okay? Be careful you don't torque on that knee too much, okay? Push down. We want to strengthen the inside part of this foot and that ankle. So your foot, there's a lot of muscles in there. It is resisting your foot from collapsing, okay? And then release, and then slowly back out of it, okay? Let's try that again. <clears throat> Good, find that sort of end range, apply 30%, 40%, down, you're pushing down hard, right on your leg, use your arms, use your hands. Okay, hold, 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 and then release. Take that pressure off. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Try to keep that range. I know that quad's probably running a little. Back out smooth, okay? So, we've gone 12, 11. Now I'm gonna open up and go to 11. Excuse me, 12, 12. All right, swing your back foot over if you need better balance, okay? Because we're gonna be going at this angle at one o'clock. And sometimes if your leg is straight behind you, you may lose your balance, okay? So just open that foot up for better balance and stability. But your foot, to be clear, your foot's going to stay pointed at 12. What's going to be pointed at 1 is your knee, okay? So we're not at an angle, no longer straight, okay? This one is going to be the hardest of them all, right? Go to apply 30, 40. Apply a little bit more pressure, 50% pressure on that foot, on that leg. Good, hold, hold, 
release. Hold it, hold it. This is where we're going to want to challenge your stability here, right? Because if we can train in more planes, our joints are safer, right? The whole point of this is to be more mobile, but to be more stable, right? We don't just want to be walking around all like jellyfish, okay? If that's hurting, if you're just tuning in, if you move into discomfort, I'm okay with that, okay? If it's a sharp beast thing like pain, go shorter, decrease your load, so not as heavy, not as hard, not, with not as much pressure. Or if it's really hurting, hey, just don't do it, okay? We're not here to hurt anybody, right? Do no harm. Thirty. 40% pressure, 50% of my body weight, good, hold, 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 and then relax, and back out of that, okay, good, so go ahead and stand up, give that a try, see how that feels, you can do some ankle circles, notice what it feels like on your other foot that you have not done this with, right, so circles, well, I can already tell you, my right one feels great, my right one feels a lot looser than my left, it always does, but that's neither here nor there. What's going on? Welcome, Instagram. All right. So now we're going to do the left. Straight at 12 o'clock, okay? Ready? Here we go. Straight on. Find your end range first, okay? So no, pr no pressure yet. Just drive that knee straight o'clock over 12 o'clock, excuse me, at, uh, over your toes. Once you kind of feel... But you don't have any more range and you've met that max range then i want you to apply some pressure on top of your knee as you drive forward okay kind of hang out here and go ahead and apply pressure down so it's a downward pressure okay about 30 percent pressure 40 50 percent pressure really crank on that good hold 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 crank's not really a good word right really apply pressure Release, but try not to lose that range, okay? Hold it, hold it, come out of that slow, okay? So the drill is we push down, we sustain, we hold, we release our pressure without losing that range, okay? I wanna see if you can keep that range after you've applied and loaded that tissue, okay? Reason being is, um, without sounding too much like a geek, <laughs> deep down inside, I am a geek, I love neurology. The reason being, if you really wanna know, there are mechanoreceptors, okay? Receptors in your joints, receptors in your muscles and in your tissue that respond information and input way up here to your brain, okay? That's just one of the many receptors that our nervous system uses to input information upstairs, right? So sometimes when you step off a curb or a route, um, walking on trails or whatnot, it may be that you're not getting or providing enough feedback fast enough to your nervous system upstairs to make a quick impulse reaction, okay? So in order to prevent falls and improve your balance, this is one of those tips that you can use, okay? 30%, sorry, gotta talk and walk, it's difficult, okay? 40%, but that's the reason why we're doing this. If you wanna know why, there's science behind this. It's not just a made up thing that I figured out. Oh, let me entertain people today. All right, 50%, press, press, press. Okay, release your pressure. Maintain the pressure down in your foot, though, so no more upper body pressure. Just slowly come out of that. Okay, set one more there. You should feel that opening up in the front of that joint. Pressure is okay. Pain is not cool. And then you should also feel a little bit of stretch in that lower calf and Achilles, okay? Find that range. Go ahead and press down, hold it, hold it, 40%, hold it, don't hold your breath, just the pressure, 50%, press, 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 hold, 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 and relax, okay, slowly, pop up out of there, okay, all right, so that was three at um, 12 o'clock, now we're going to hit three at 11, and then to the outside at one o'clock, okay, so now, we're gonna be going to the inside, okay? Just be careful, like I said before, you don't wanna crank on that knee. You're just trying to drive your knee still straight, but more toward your big toe, okay? Hold it, hold it, 50% here. Good, and slowly, oops, sorry about that. Slowly release your upper body pressure. 
and then come out of it. If it's burning in your quad, burning your by your knee, that's good. You're there. Okay, you should also feel some pressure in the front of that ankle, which is normal. Okay, but think about how important it is for you to be able to load your tissue and load your joints. Right, the reason this is safe. First of all, you should be breathing in and out through your nose. It's difficult to be talking and doing all this and breathing and coaching you guys simultaneously, but hey, that's what I'm here for, right, to help you. Um, the reason why this is safe is because it is slow, right? You don't see me going fast and you don't see me going super heavy, right? Injuries typically happen when <clears throat> your tissue capacity ex is exceeded by load, meaning too heavy, uh, repetition too many times um, or combination of both sometimes right sometimes it's too heavy too fast and then too often right so typically runners knees and um, jumpers knees and shin splints and all that release slowly slowly come out that can be controlled or reduced anyway if you train those tissues we have to train them in multiple directions not just oh I want to go run so I'm just gonna work like this unfortunately your shoulders and your hips they're ball and socket they're not designed to work that way, okay? <clears throat> and then to the outside. So now you're taking that, so this is going to be a little bit harder. Now you're taking that knee to that outside toward your pinky, okay? Find your range first. And now apply some of that downward pressure. They're applying pressure down 30%, 40, 50, push, push, push. Slowly release your upper body pressure. And I hold that. But firing these muscles in the foot and then back off. Okay? Good. Anybody else warm in here? Warm now. Should be sweating a little bit. Good. Hold. 30%. 40. And 50. Hold, hold, hold. Release. Stay, stay there. Stay, keep that pressure there. Slowly back out. Good. All right. So, check that out. Loosen up your knees if you need to. Okay. Past few days, we've been doing some knee circles. You could do some knee circles if you had on, if you remember. If not, just go back and check your balance, right? See how that foot feels. You can walk, right? I can't really walk because I'm on camera. But you guys can go ahead and walk around at home. See how that feels. Your ankles should be, feel a little bit turned on, for lack of a better term, um, or looser, or maybe lighter, right? You might just feel like, oh, you know what? Not so stiff, which is the whole point, right? All right, <clears throat> next. Uh, we're gonna go back to the kneeling position. I just wanna give your knees a break, right? So we're gonna go back to the kneeling. I would recommend you get in your wall or pull up a chair or something that's sturdy in case you do lose your balance, because we're gonna be working on the front of the core, getting that hip to drive up, okay? What's going on? Instagram, I've got some High fives over there. So I'm just going to use a stick for my balance, and I'm going to face you guys so you can see. But again, if you don't have a stick, you can use a broom, right? The broom's up here. It's fine. Just get away from your face. Um, or just take the bottom of the broom off. You can use a wall. You can use a chair. It doesn't really matter. All we're going to use this for is so that we don't fall to the side, okay? So what I want you to do, both feet, to be clear, both feet are going to be active, okay? I'll do one facing you this way, then I'll do one facing sideways so you can see that both my feet are actually working here, okay? So what you want to picture yourself doing with your active feet that we just warmed up is try to stand up, okay? So the amount of effort and pressure you're putting into your foot should actually enable you to get up, okay? We're not getting up. I just want you to be active with that foot. With the wall, the chair, the stick, the room, whatever you're using to, to stabilize, Go ahead and start pushing down on that, maybe just 10, 15%. So you're gonna activate the lateral line, activate this core, which is gonna help stabilize this hip. And with your back toes, you're driving those toes into the ground. This is the active knee, okay? So I'm gonna hold my hand up here, and we're just gonna lift that knee up a little bit. So my foot is just hovering, okay? You guys probably can't see that from that angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn around so you guys can see. Get the stick out of your way. All right, so my foot is on the mat. These back toes are into the ground, squeezing, activating these glutes. And I'm gonna try to apply enough pressure so I can actually stand up. Don't do it though, don't stand. 20% pressure out here, or if you need this out to the side, you could do that as well. 
This is the active leg, okay? Stabilizing everything on my right side to enable me to lift my left, okay? And notice, it's just a little bit, right? I'm not lifting it all the way to the sky. It's very challenging, right? Just hold it there. Hold. You lose your balance. You can switch sides, right? Fine. Pick the other wall. Or move this or get yourself in a better position where you're a little bit more stable. There we go. Okay. Really tighten that tight core. And if you can get higher, great. Okay. Over here, I didn't have so much success as you saw, right? I was not able to get my foot as high because I didn't have enough leverage to press down. And if you're using just a wall or a chair, you're also going to struggle with this, right? So find a place where you can mobilize that hip. There we go. Sometimes, just a matter of activating it, right? So down hard with this back foot. Tall, press 20% down with the chair or the stick or the broom. Okay, so just three on each side. I'm going to show you on this side. Maybe. Can you see me okay? All right, so this is my back toe. Not flat. You're going to be into the ground, okay? In the ground, active, because I want to be able to push part of this back foot so I can lift up my lead leg, okay? Without falling back. Be careful you don't lean back. 20% pressure here, tight. Squeeze these glutes, brace. Okay, the whole point, you guys saw me shift back a little bit. We're trying to prevent shifting back, okay? So try not to shift back. Like I said, if you got to reposition your balance, that's okay. This is not a balance drill for now. But just to get that core to engage, get your glutes to fire. So firing my left glute, raising my left knee. Just a little bit, about a half an inch. To an inch up off the ground, hold and put it down. Hold, 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 low on the way down. All right, let's hit one more there. Just trying, just getting my stride here, finally getting this to work. So don't lean back, pressure down. Should be burning. In this front hip flexor, okay? So, to be clear, you guys probably couldn't see. I was not getting my foot up this high off the ground. It was barely getting off of there. Just enough to slide a stack of cards or a stack of credit cards underneath your foot, okay? All right, moving on. Okie dokie. I'm going to go ahead and stand up. Give your knees a rest. <clears throat> We're going to go back to the figure eights, okay? So we moved our hip. In which direction? Up, right, and down. So one leg was pushing down like in the lunge, and the other one's going up. But that's just one direction. And if you remember from my discussions earlier this week, your hips and your shoulders are ball and socket, right? They hint, they kind of rotate both directions. If you're going to ball, right? Our elbows and our knees are hinges. They just move like this, up and down. They don't really rotate. This rotation happens here, and this rotation happens here. So you got to train it and move it that way, yeah? Okay, so you're going to go ahead and stand on your right. We're going to pick your leg up. It doesn't have to go super high, okay? My knee is below my hip. My hip is where my hand is, and my knee's down here. So we're going to do a figure eight, diet, like laying on its side, an infinity sign, right? not figure eight vertically, okay? To be clear, this is a figure eight on its side, okay? Remember, those circles don't have to be humongous. But they have to be circles, so try not to get choppy, okay? Try to make that as smooth as possible. So we're going to go ahead and hit five in each direction. And this hip, your stationary hip, it's supposed to be just that. When I'm turning this leg, I don't want this hip to end up facing that way, right? You want this hip to be straight in line. So it's like keep my arm here just to show you guys. All that motion is coming from the ball part of my socket in my hip, okay? Not for my trunk, not for my low back. Your low back is not designed to do this, especially in your lumbar, okay? It's designed to flex and extend. We get rotation from our hip and then through our thoracic spine. Throw a ball, okay? All right, let's go ahead and switch sides. If you need to put your hand on the wall, again, go ahead and hold on to the wall. This is not 
a balance trick, okay? You can hang on. Whatever helps this leg to stay stable, you can use a door frame, a chair, kitchen counter, whatever you got. Okay? Nice and smooth. There you go. Good. So if it's burning through this hip, <laughs> that's normal. It should tell you that you're just not used to firing those muscles in that controlled, slow manner. Yeah? All right. So let's go ahead and switch sides. So figure eight. So then he's going to drop down toward your other knee, up and around, up toward your belly button, down and around to the outside, up and around toward your hip. Okay. So I'm going to draw that with my hand so you guys can see that. You guys see how that's a figure eight lying down? Not vertically, right? We're not going this way. So up. There you go. Good. Got it. This hip staying still. You guys can see from that stick. I'm now I'm struggling my balance because I'm about to stick it so close. But this knee, this hip is not rotating out. Okay? Keep that straight. Alright, let's take one more. You can always put your hand on your low back to see if you're rotating excessively through your lumbar spine, which is not ideal, not the point here. Okay? Alright, give those hips a rest, give them a break. Alright, moving on to the pelvis, okay? Moving on to the pelvis. So wherever my head or my hat in this case is going to go, that's going to be opposite of my pelvis. So these are more figure eights, but this is an hourglass, okay? So if my head goes to the left, my hips are going to shoot out to the right and vice versa, okay? So opposite side. Before you go ahead and get started, make sure you keep your knees soft. If your legs are straight and you do this, you're going to be feeling that and you're going to be tightening up. And straining your lumbar spine, which is not the point. We want to move through our pelvis with soft knees, okay? So, back up so you guys can see. So my knees are soft, and it's semi, a little bit of a bend. I go ahead and put your hands on your hips so you can tell where you're going. I'm going to lean to my right, and then just lean to my left. Go slow. It doesn't have to be humongous range. Because this motion is still happening at the pelvis. Your back is obviously going to follow suit. But before, when we were doing the figure eights, we were standing on one leg, yeah? So we were moving that femur inside that socket. That socket was staying still. The pelvis was staying still, and that femur was doing the figure eights, yeah? Now our femurs are fixed, right, because our feet are on the ground. Our knees are bent, so our femurs are no longer moving. What's moving is our pelvis is moving over top of that femur. Does that make sense? We have to be able to hit mobility and ranges in both directions, right? Both planes. All right, now we're going to go, ahead and go forward to back. When you go back, okay, let me show you from the side. Keep those knees soft. When you go back, try not to stiffen out your legs, because that's going to be motion only at your lumbar spine. The more knee bend you have, the safer this is going to be for your spine and your back. And don't push it, right? This isn't to see how low can you go. Not the point here. Bow, so your head goes forward, your butt goes back. Right? So you switch that up, keep those knees soft, keep the load in the front of your quad, okay? It does not have to be humongous range of motion here. <clears throat> now your feet are nice and warm, right? They're mobilized. Right? You prep that nicey Y. We we're prepping getting that forward because as your knees go forward and they're bent, you need that range of motion in your ankles so you're not. Stiffening up or straining your knee, okay? So we went side to side, we went front to back. Now we're gonna complete that circle. So this is where you get that uh, figure eight or hourglass. So imagine that the hourglass is my belly button, all right? Keeping those knees soft. We're gonna continue that to the side, forward, to the other side, back. Knees stay soft, especially here, okay? And if you smooth that out, it goes, just go slow. Again, if this is scary or dangerous for you or you're starting to freak out, first slow down, right? It's not a race. Second, shorten your range. Third, and most importantly, breathe in, breathe out through your nose. Okay? Take your time, explore some of those ranges that you're not used to moving. You're going to notice it's easier to go in one direction versus the other, okay? Go 
but we're trying here to balance that out as best we can. So these are hourglass pelvic circles, okay? So my head is going back, my pelvis is going forward, okay? You guys see that? So head is going opposite of your pelvis. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and move up to the torso. <clears throat> I'm gonna do my best to show you guys this from both angles, front and from the side. <clears throat> It is super, super, excuse me, super important for you to have good mobility in your thoracic spine. Thoracic spine is where your ribs attach, okay? So in your thoracic spine, basically where your ribs are, we need to get that to be able to move. Everybody's like this, right? I mean, this, this should be the easiest, right? We just kind of hang out and type and text and do everything, sit down all day. This should be the easiest posture of all, when you just sit, right? But that's thoracic flexion, right, or kyphosis, which just leads to neck problems, shoulder impingement, all sorts of issues. Can you get it to go opposite? Can you extend through that, right? So I'm going to show you two ways. I'm going to show you sitting down first, and then I'm going to show you standing up. So sitting down, what I like to do is I like to hold one foot or one knee up, all right, my feet on the ground. And all I'm going to do is slump. And then I'm going to extend. So you're trying to get your chest toward that front leg. Exhale. Inhale as you come out. So what I like to say is a proud kid and then a shy kid. Okay, so a shy kid is always kind of slumped down trying to hide from the crowd. And a proud kid just scored a goal. They just got an A. They're sticking their Superman chest out. Back and forth, nice and easy, okay? So, that's seated, right? Now I'm gonna show you from the side in a kneeling position. Okay, so, basically you're paving that chest in like you're shy and bashful, and then out, okay? I'm gonna put my hands behind my back so you guys can see that I'm not just moving my shoulders, okay? This is a shoulder motion. We're not there yet. I want you to stay tall, pave that chest in, and then stick that chest out. Okay, it looks like I'm moving my shoulders, but I'm not. See if I can show you from this side, okay? So chest back, then chest forward. Got it? So, we're gonna practice that a few times, and then we're also gonna go side to side. Just like the pelvis and the low back, are we went side to side? We can also do that with our ribs. So in this case, our pelvis is gonna stay still. I'm gonna keep my hands here, and I'm just gonna shift Nice and slow, my ribcage over my pelvis, okay? You guys can see that side to side. All right, so what do we do with the pelvis? We went side to side first, right? Then we went front to back. So here, front, back, side, side. And if we smooth that out, it'll become a little bit smoother in a circle, okay? Kind of like hula hoops you do with your legs. Well, now I want you to try to focus doing that hula hoop right from your sternum. Okay, so we're going to go forward, to the side, to the back, that bashful kid, to the side, and then forward, okay? If it helps to keep your fingertips on your sternum so you have an idea of where to move from, this is called proprioception, okay? Your brain relies on touch and feel to get awareness of where things are in space, like where your joints are in space, where your head is in space, right? And then, oh, excuse me, then switch direction. So, Notice how hard that is to go in one direction, okay? And then chest out. And then go ahead and hit five the other way. Okay? You can place your hands wherever you want. I'm just placing them here to give you guys a better visual that I'm moving through my ribcage, right? I'm sure you from the side. Okay, so forward to the side, back to the side. Okay? Smooth that out. It's just here. Okay. So that's going to prep us for the shoulders, okay? I think just for uh, clarity of view, it's going to be easier for me to show you guys that from a kneeling position, okay? So this arm's going to stay straight. These are called cam shafts. We're going to be moving from the shoulder blade, not the elbow, okay? So we're going to be moving in a shrug up, shrug down, turn. All right, here we go. So shrug up and then shrug down. So 12 o'clock up. Six o'clock down. Twelve, six. Then we're gonna go front to back. Okay. So 
So my shoulder is about 10 to 15 degrees open, okay? So it's not directly in front, because if it's in front, it can pinch right here in your shoulder. So I'll take that hand out. If your hand gets tired, if it's too hard to control, you can always make your lever, lever a little bit shorter, a shorter arm, frankly. So shrug, you're gonna be shrugging from the shoulder blade. Up, down. Got it? Okay, and then forward, you're gonna reach with that elbow, and then plunger that elbow back in. So press and pull. Press it out, pull it in, okay? So if we went up, forward, down, and back, right, and then we complete that and smooth that out, then you see why this is called a camshaft. So nothing's moving, but my elbow straight, nothing's moving, but my shoulder blade, right? We're trying to get that shoulder blade to move across a fixed torso. And go ahead and reverse. Okay, reverse that. Make sure it's smooth in all directions, right? Uh, this is gonna be easy because you can hold your phone. But back here and down here, this is going to be tricky for a lot of you guys that aren't used to engaging those muscles. You start to cramp up. Just go a little bit slower and a little bit shorter. Try to keep that hand still so you're not going all the way up and down. We're just moving through the shoulder blade. Okay? Good. Let's go ahead and switch sides. So from the front at 12 o'clock, open that up just a little. Up, down. Okay? Try not to over-involve your neck, right? Get out of this position, keep that head nice and tall, and go ahead and go forward. Reach, 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 pull, pull, pull. Reach, 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 and pull. All right, let's move that out. Move that out. Go forward, up, back, down. Forward, up, back, and down. Trying to keep this still, okay? And go ahead and switch. If this is easy for you, which I imagine it's not that easy, but if it is and you do want a challenge, go ahead and squeeze your fist, okay? We went over this yesterday when we were doing these circles. So if you squeeze your fist, that's gonna um, improve your shoulder and rotator cuff strength and stability. If that was too easy, you wanted more of a challenge, okay? Go ahead and squeeze, but don't let go of that fist at any range, right? This is harder. For me, it's harder to go in this direction and squeeze Right, starting to build up some fatigue, so go ahead and loose, shake those loose. All right, so we did rotation, we did pelvic rotation, torso rotation, circles, camshaft. We got those shoulder blades to move, right? Now we're going to fix our torso. Oh, excuse me, we're going to fix our shoulders and move that torso. So I'm sure you guys have seen in yoga they do cat cow, right, where they're really kind of going up and down. Um, so let me show you the difference. This is not a cat cow move. Okay, I'll show you cat cow. This is not what we're doing. All right, so cat cow is basically like this. You go up, cat stretches, okay, kind of rock back a little bit if you want, and then you're coming down, okay? So that's cat cow, but that's moving this up and down, you know, up to down position. We're gonna work on a little bit of stability in our rotator cuff and our shoulder blades uh, and all these muscles back here that help stabilize your shoulder. So what we're gonna do is go up and down but we're not going to round our back. We're going to try to keep that flat. We're, think about doing the push-up, the end part of the push-up, and you just push back a little bit more. Okay, so that shoulder blade is going to come around your shoulder, your rib cage, and then back. We're going to try to hit about eight here. These are challenging, and I suggest you start from all fours. Don't try this on your uh, toes if you don't have a lot of upper body strength. Okay, if it's easy, go ahead and progress, but let's at least get 10 from this position. So, always, always, always active. My hands are on mats. Even though they're on mats, I'm trying to stretch and uh, split that mat in two, okay? So don't just place your hands on the ground. Get active with them. So hands are down. Now I'm stretching actively east to west. This mat underneath me. So what I'm going to do is drop my chest. Hold, 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 hold. Keep stretching that mat. Keep stretching. And then as you start to come back up, you're going to switch. You're going to switch to kind of shrinking the mat, okay? So it looks like this. My hands are down on the ground. I'm stretching that mat as I'm coming forward. Stretch, 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 stretch. As you transition slowly, you're going to start to shrink that mat and then push yourself away. Okay? So your end position should feel like this, and your beginning position should feel like this. Got it? So from the side, like this. From the front, like that. Okay? 
active with those shoulders. All right, let's try to hit 10 here. Stretching, actively stretching. As you come down, elbows stay straight. Don't bend those elbows. As you're done, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Press, press, press. Elbows remain straight. Okay? Switch to squeeze and press. There you go, you're three. If you're shaking, you're doing it right. If you're sweating. Good job. Good for you. You're doing it right. Okay. Stretch. Down. Squeeze and press. Stretch. Come down. Squeeze. Push away. Three more. Let's go. Those shoulders, blades should be firing by now, right? Should be warm and fatiguing back there. So this is mobility and movement, right? We're mobilizing, but at the end of the day, we're hopefully moving a little bit better. So yeah, if you want to try that assessment, like I said at the beginning, you want to see what overhead feels like and see what reaching over to the side feels like, go for it, okay? All right, what do we have next? Oh, last but not least, the neck, okay? Neck, you can do, um, I would suggest you go slow. I'm going to show you how to get that neck to go all the way up, all the way down. But we're also going to involve what's called a retraction, okay? Or a chicken neck or a double chin or whatever you want to think of. But getting that texture's neck and getting your head from being in this forward uh, flexion position, you have to get it to come back a little, okay? So I'm going to show you this from the side. We're going to go forward and back. I like to place my hands under my chin to give me some feedback so that you're not lifting. We're not going to nod up and down yet, okay? So if you're wearing a hat or you're keeping your gaze straight, you want to keep your gaze out in front of you. So I just like to place my hands under my chin like a little kid on the counter, okay? So chin forward, which should be very easy for you guys. And then we're just going to push straight back. Same thing, go slow, go very delicate and very slow with the neck. It's the most sensitive, one of the most sensitive areas in the body, okay? Nothing fast, as usual. Breathe in and out through your nose. You guys saw or attended my wife's stick mobility class. She's always doing the frumpy chicken or the texture neck. And that's getting these segments to go forward and these segments to go back, okay? And that's all fine, and that's all dandy in this plane. But we know where you live, right? We know that that phone's down here, and we know that all these vertebrae are flexed in flexion, but they often don't retract in flexion. We normally just do things forward and back, right? Today I want to work a little bit more. Today we're going to reach down. So look down at the floor. With your hands, you're pushing, you're basically pulling your tissue down and up. Keeping that jaw closed. Nice stretch through the front of that neck, okay? Slow, slow, slow. All right, now that we've gone up and down, we're gonna flex the neck, come down. And now we're gonna pull that chin back. And then repeat. So down towards your chest, pull straight back. Okay, go down. Go slow, take your time. Once you get out of that, decompress your neck. Okay, lengthen that neck, reach down, bring your chin to your chest, draw closed. Pull straight back. Okay, go slow. I like to finish by looking up. Okay. So, as I said, go nice and gentle with the neck. Okay, you might have heard some popping, some cracking, some noises back there. That's totally normal. Discomfort is okay. Pain and sharp is not okay. So never move into pain. All right. That is all I have for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a message. Uh, I love the feedback that I've been getting. Uh, I've been trying to 
change up my sock game so not everything's black, okay? You get in different color mats out here. But if there's some things that I did not address or you would like to see me address, um, leave a comment or DM me either way you want. Um, and I'm happy to talk about that, happy to touch on that and show you guys some different ways to move. Tomorrow, I think we're going to start to use some bands to give us a little bit of feedback, not quite like our uh, 8.30 morning where it's a workout where we're using those bands to get that heart rate up. We're going to use that to help facilitate a little bit better range of motion and a little bit better range and proprioception and control at that end range, okay? So we'll dial that up a little bit tomorrow. All right. Eat your greens, wash your hands, stay safe, everybody. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.